yeah, I think it was a massive eye-opener for me. Um, I was taught, I think like Sarah, so little about the women's movement at school. I think there was a paragraph in our history books about the suffragette movement. Mm -hmm. So I knew these key names like Emmeline Pankhurst and Emily Wilde Davidson, but I didn't really know much more beyond a woman, you know, going under a horse. And there was some stories like that, but it was sort of very vague. So um, just reading the script for the first time for me was was kind of a huge learning curve. And then, um, and then when we started doing the research and reading the accounts of these women and and their own words, their own testimonies about their lives, and um, that was that was a huge kind of moment. And um, and just the more we worked on it, and the more that we you know spent time talking about these women and obviously making the film, it was um, hugely inspiring. And, um, and we were so excited, you know, because these, the story was so enormous and such a huge part of our history and had just never been told before. So to get to be the ones to do it was, was because, um, because as Abby said, so many of them were relevant to today, mm -hmm. but it didn't feel, you know, I was sort of reticent to do a period drama, um, having already signed up to do Far From the Madding Crowd and having done quite a lot of period drama in, in the past. Um, so when I heard there was a film about the suffragettes, I thought, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, corsets. But, um, but you know, reading it, there was just so much that just felt, you know, that, we, that it, it, there was, it wasn't going to be a slice of, just a slice of history, it was going to be talking about things that matter to women today. Um, and I loved the character, I thought, you know, she was nothing like any other character I'd played, and I'm always trying to find new things to, to do. And that she had this extraordinary journey, that she starts the story completely ordinary and, and um, reluctant and nervous and shy and kind of retreating from the world. And she's sort of brought out into the world by these women and, and kind of finds her voice. And I thought that was just such a great journey to tell. Some younger women who feel like, oh, that's for my mom, that's for my grandma. It's not for me. Yeah, I think so. I think we've got pretty poor voting statistics in England for women, um, which was the biggest shame about the film not coming out in England before our election. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but both that it's coming out here before the election here is fantastic. Um, but yeah, definitely, I think, you know. And, and, and largely because, you know, we're, I think a lot of it is, well, the same apathy that you have, you know, across the border towards politicians and, and politics, but also, you know, the, this idea that we just, our history has been sort of um, neglected and, and, and our women's history has been kind of written out of the history books and so, you know, we don't know a lot of what's been done for our sakes and I think that's one of the most exciting things about the film, you know, giving people a reminder of that. And Gloria Steinem is on a book tour right now as well with her memoir. Riot, and you know, we were throwing. It was, I don't think it's in the, is it in the film? Is Not that dumb, no. No, we were throwing horse dung <laughs> at carriages, and you know, and getting um, beaten up by policemen, and um, it was so brilliant. But yeah, the crew. Were just like, <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's Emily Pankhurst and Emily Wan and Davison, who are real characters. All the other women, are, uh, and and the men really are the composites of real characters. So um, Edith Allen, um, Helen's character, and in fact, her husband. Um, Hugh, played by Timbar Lynch, were based on about three three couples within the movement who, um, all of which, you know, the husbands were incarcerated or certainly were kind of virulent supporters and members of the Men's League, for example. Maud herself was based on a concept of two or three women that I looked at, but um, the same with Alice and and Violet was was actually the most familiar character in many ways, which was uh, the woman, a woman who had several children who was often dealing with huge sexual violence at home, who was economically bound. And so we tried to always find the model. Um, mm -hmm. and, and But I think part of the desire was that for that was, again, you know, to try and, you know, to, we were trying to grab this very intense 16-month period in suffragette history. You know, this movement went on for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And our film opens um, 40 years into that movement. And this is about inherited feminism and inherited activism. And, uh, and so it was also recognising there was this legacy that was passed from woman to woman. And so I didn't want to tie myself to any kind of biographical fact in that way that I would have to follow the course of one life. Because, you know, there was a woman called Annie Kenny who was very significant in the leadership and a working class woman, another woman called Hannah Mitchell. And even their, their biographies and their memoirs really fed into the writing of it.
um, Inspector Steve was based on a composite of two detectors at the time. And, you know, again, you know, that was revelatory to us when we saw the police records, which I said were opened in 2003, which was the first time they were ever seen and showed the level of, of intimidation and interrogation of these women. But it was also interesting to look at these two detectives and... Um, you know, they were using new technology at the time, which is what we pick up on. Up upon. I mean, they seem very cumbersome, those cameras, and it's sort of hard to believe they weren't seen. But that was also extraordinary, was to, to see that so, realize that so much of history is staged, and actually to see those moments of intimate moments where the women didn't realize they were being photographed. And in fact, we looked at the first image of Photoshop, which was a woman had a scarf tied around her neck, and it was actually to disguise her being manhandled by a police officer. Mm -hmm. And so there were lots of, it was a very interesting time, but. But what was really profound when I looked at these two detectives was you could see how complex and um, uh, conflicted they were. And so it was about quoting men who were, had upheld the law and then were struggling with that law. It was a great question. What would happen if he didn't have his rabbit? And tears streamed up. <laughs> 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 but anyway, but he, was, you know, he had a very good, stable family and could contextualise it. And his mum was very supportive. But in the read through, it was, he couldn't stay for that scene because he cried at the thought of it. Yeah. And then when we shot that scene, that we had to kind of create a tunnel to his mum. <laughs> and it's tough on the adult actors, actually, because you have to shoot the little kids first. So Kerry was giving this Oscar winning performance, but we weren't <laughs> seeing it. We were all focusing on the little boy the whole time, and then we came to her after about 15 takes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, it was, it was fantastic. So I would sit in the chair, they'd tie my hair back, they'd put a bit of dirt on my face and send me off. <laughs> um, all the black circles under my eyes are real. <laughs> that was just exhaustion. But yeah, it was very, very quick. Apart from, you know, the bruised days. And I had a very, very um, elaborate... Uh, burn on my arm yeah. that took uh, the days that we shot that that took kind of two or three hours but um, but everything else yeah it was very brief. We called them rough ups instead of touch ups. <laughs> <laughs>